Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about why the SoFi stock price is falling, and when it could actually rebound and end up surging here pretty soon. We're going to be going over their latest price targets and price predictions, as well as their newest news updates regarding this company. We're going to be talking about and analyzing two different articles today. The first one is named, Why Student Loan Forgiveness Can Take SoFi Stock to the Next Level. So clearly we're talking about how this stock could end up surging. And then lastly, we're going to be going over a very bullish article which describes how SoFi Technologies is actually a leading fintech company and how the stock price could skyrocket. So in this video, we're going to talk about after the SoFi stock price eventually finds a bottom in their share price, the stock is set to surge upwards. Now the fact that the SoFi stock price is falling should not be a big surprise. In the last day, the company has lost almost 2% of its value. In the last five days, they've lost a around 12% of their value in the last month, the company has dropped just above 7% of their value, and over the last six months, the company has dropped 48%, or around 48%, and this should not surprise any of us, because I have literally made a multitude of videos talking about how the stock price was going to crash before it eventually rebounds, and I've talked about this a multitude of times on the channel, and this is why you really need to pay attention to these various predictions. Now, of course, I'm not always right every single time, it's just my opinion, and you should treat that as such and take it with a giant grain of salt. However, it is good to see how SoFi Technologies is following our predictions very closely. If you didn't know, SoFi Technologies is a fintech company or a financial technology company that offers their consumers a plethora of various financial services and of financial products. Currently, their share price trades for $5.90, while professionals think that the company is somewhat undervalued right now on a growth or DCF basis to where they calculate the company should be worth anywhere between $7 on the low end and $11 on the high end. So accumulating shares at this price, considering that the stock price is pulling back right now, may be a good move, especially if you believe that this company is going to surge over the next couple of months. Now, I personally think it's going to surge because from here on out, I think we're going to get fantastic financial results, especially as certain catalysts come by, including the potential for this company to become profitable in the year of 2023, or worst case scenario, becoming profitable by the end of 2024, which is going to ignite the overall SoFi stock price. So let's begin by analyzing our first article that actually says that the student loan forgiveness that's being implemented by the Biden administration and the extension of the student loan moratorium is actually going to take the SoFi stock price to the next level, causing it to surge. And I agree with them. Now, first, of course, the company is going to have to find a bottom, which is most likely going to be around $5.25. And once SoFi Technologies actually finds that bottom, we can anticipate that the stock is going to surge just like this article is saying. Now, of course, because I don't see eye to eye with every single author, I am also going to add my opinion after we analyze this article. But the article starts off saying that SoFi Technologies is a very successful fintech company and a neo-banking firm. The Biden administration just recently extended the student loan moratorium repayment to end on December 31st, which means that January 1st of 2023, federal student loans are going to start accruing interest again and payments will start to become due again. And we're going to talk about how this is actually good news for SoFi Technologies, not bad news. Because right now, a lot of investors are liquidating SoFi stock for three main reasons, and I think it's an overreaction. The first one, like we just talked about, was that Biden has extended the student loan moratorium. So that is a clear Debbie Downer. And then secondly, investors are still kind of salty as they mull over their quarter two results, which I actually thought was very impressive. But if we hone in on their net earnings loss, it's pretty off-putting because they had a net earnings loss of around $95.8 million, which is a huge blow to SoFi Technologies, particularly the investors who want this company to become profitable as soon as possible, like I do, which we've talked about that in a previous video as well. But for all of these collectively to happen at around the same time with a huge institutional investor like SoftBank selling SoFi shares, SoFi bringing in a net earnings loss of almost $100 million, and the Biden administration extending the student loan moratorium, and also aiming to implement a policy where they can forgive up to $10,000 to $20,000 worth of student loans for qualified borrowers, this all looks like a negative concoction for the SoFi stock price. And that's why short-term investors and traders are actually liquidating their SoFi shares, which is why it's been reflected very negatively in SoFi stock over the last six months, one month, the last week, and even the last day, because clearly the stock hasn't found a bottom yet. But I actually think that a lot of this is good 
good news. I'm not going to go into too much detail regarding SoftBank to where SoftBank is selling SoFi, not because they believe SoFi is a bad company, but rather because SoftBank as a business is doing very bad. So they are liquidating their various investments so they can get money and cash flow and some capital to make up for their losses. And then as far as SoFi goes for their net earnings loss, the company is currently projected to become profitable either in 2023 or 2024. And that is absolutely phenomenal, which also means this company is rapidly increasing over a 30% CAGR in terms of their revenues. So those are the quick answers to those two points. But let's talk about how the student loan moratorium extension is actually good for SoFi technologies and how all of these things are actually going to send the SoFi stock price even higher once the company actually finds a bottom. So this is fantastic news for long-term investors because as short-term investors try to react to this negative news by selling their shares, long-term investors like me are going to actually buy the company while the stock price is falling because over the long term, it's just going to give me better stock price appreciation because I have lowered my average cost for the company. I also want to remind investors that their Q2 earnings report was actually pretty positive aside from their net earnings loss. We also have to remember that SoFi's chief executive officer, which is their CEO, who is Anthony Noto, actually said that the company posted record adjusted net revenue, which was up 50% year over year. And our eighth consecutive quarter of positive adjusted EBITDA, which is their EBITDA, which stands for Earnings Before Interest Tax Appreciation and Amortization, which doubled sequentially, end quote, and that is extremely positive. We also have to remember that SoFi Technologies actually destroyed their overall year-over-year -year increase in regards to their personal loans because their loaning business is the segment of the company that is bringing in the largest amounts of revenue. So these personal loans are more than making up the 54% year-over-year year decline in student loan refinances and originations, mainly because personal loans are absolutely skyrocketing. And the reason why this is impressive is because unlike other fintech companies and other banks who see their personal loans decrease during this time, SoFi's personal loans have actually increased. And why is that? Well, due to rising interest rates that the Federal Reserve is doing to get inflation under control by raising the prime rate, this is negatively affecting other banks. But because SoFi Technologies offers such competitive interest rates, much better than the majority of their competitors in terms of fintech companies and banks, many people have flooded into SoFi Technologies over their traditional banking institutions because they are so competitive and they're offering them cheaper interest rates than some of these other companies. And this is making up a lot of lost ground that SoFi has suffered from the decline in their student loan segment. So we can see that once the student loan moratorium ends, we're going to start seeing a lot of student loan originations increase in their overall volume, which is going to be very, very lucrative and very valuable to SoFi Technologies in general. Also, I want to point out another positive catalyst that some investors are worried about is that they are afraid that the Biden administration will extend the student loan payment again and increase the time and the duration of the student loan moratorium, which is going to hurt SoFi's stock price overall. However, the Biden administration actually said in a statement which extended the most recent student loan moratorium to December 31st of 2022, that this is going to be the one final time, end quote. And that means that they are not going to extend it or most likely not going to extend it again, which is very positive for SoFi Technologies. And if this actually turns out to be true, SoFi Technologies could be ignited, which means that not only is the revenue going to take off, it's going to thrust them toward profitability, but it's also going to be reflected very positively in the SoFi stock price, causing it to surge. We had two analysts actually chime in on this. One is a Mizuho analyst who said that this is a positive development for SoFi Technologies as the ongoing extensions have have weighed on sentiment and fundamentals, end quote. Another Jeffries analyst chimed in and said that the news removes an overhang whereby refinancing volumes were previously impacted by those waiting for an announcement on federal debt forgiveness, end quote. So he's saying that because the Biden administration has just full on and come out and told everyone their plan, that it takes uncertainty out of the market in terms on what's going to happen with student loan debt. And this has opened up a lot of freedom for investors as well as people looking to refinance their loans to then flood into SoFi technologies and increase their overall demand. And this is the best part, I think. SoFi's business model, their flywheel business model, which relies on cross-selling and upselling, is going to be absolutely painful 
paramount in their overall success. So as all of this demand for student loan refinancing runs into the market from December onward, SoFi is going to take these people, add them to their customer base, and hopefully sell them other products that they would probably need. Maybe they're looking to buy a house or a new car or they need a personal loan. So through this avenue, SoFi Technologies is not only going to make money off of the student loan originations, but also from other parts by cross-selling or upselling these customers on other products that will ultimately help the customer in the long run, potentially even offering them checking accounts, savings accounts, and credit cards. So overall, I would say this is very positive news, and this is going to act as a phenomenal catalyst for the SoFi stock price once the stock price finds a bottom. That's why the author of this article, as well as myself, think that this is a good buying opportunity right now to get the SoFi stock price around $5 per share, but clearly the cheaper the better. And as the SoFi stock price continuously tries to find a bottom even by going lower, it just becomes an even better opportunity if you plan to hold this company for the long term. Also, I want to be transparent with you all that I don't own more than a 5% allocation to this particular company. I have a plethora of multiple fantastic companies that I own, and if you go down and become a member, I will actually show you the other companies that I am investing into. So if you want to join, remember to go and smash that subscribe button and also hit that join button next to the subscribe button so you can be notified on the companies that I already have in my stock portfolio and the companies that I am continuously buying. But with that being said, let's jump over and analyze our second article, which is by someone who I don't really agree with. I think Luke Lango, who's the author of this article, is too bullish on SoFi Technologies, which is why I like to give you all the bullish positive side and the bearish negative side so you can make your own investment decision for yourself once you have all of the information because we really should listen to both sides here. We can't be too bullish because then we run the potential of over allocating to this company and we take on unnecessary risk because if this company doesn't work out, we're going to be at a huge loss. On the other hand, I am bullish on this company and I do think it's going to work out, but I don't want to overhype myself to the point where I don't practice proper risk management, so always keep that in mind. I think SoFi Technologies does have a good long-term growth trajectory because they are expanding multiple different horizons and branches where they are attributing their revenue from, such as their investing segment, they're offering cryptocurrency trading, and they're looking to implement options trading. They also have very good checking and savings accounts, which honestly, in my opinion, are the most competitive checking and savings accounts on the market right now, along with very strong credit card and loan programs. And over the long term, I think SoFi Technologies is going to beat out a lot of the competition due to their completely amazing competitive advantage of being their own bank while also being a fintech company and a neo banking company to give even better interest rates and better deals than traditional banks can. Another reason why I think the SoFi stock price is actually going to surge is based off of data. And this also goes double for why the Biden administration probably will not be extending the student loan moratorium again. Even though, yes, they did say that they won't be extending the student loan moratorium again, the current data says that the payment freeze from the student loan moratorium has made people with student loan debt spend money in other places, such as on travel, clothing, restaurants, and a plethora of other different segments in the economy. However, this is actually increasing inflation and adding to the overall inflation problem. What we need is actually less spending in travel, clothing, and restaurants, and for people to actually start paying on their debt, and that's what's going to get inflation under control ultimately, which is why the Fed is increasing interest rates to lower inflation and kind of stop spending, put on the brakes a little bit. But the Fed walks a fine line because they can't do this too much, otherwise we could go into a very bad recession. But right now, I think the Federal Reserve is actually doing all of the right moves right now. So when the student loan moratorium does end, we're we're also going to get another green flag macroeconomically, particularly for banks and fintech companies like SoFi Technologies, because as inflation gets under control, the Fed is going to ease off and not increase interest rates so aggressively. So this is going to have a very positive deflationary impact on the US economy, which is going to allow for massive upside, particularly for SoFi and their SoFi stock price. Lastly, I think the most overlooked thing when it comes to SoFi as a business is that 
that SoFi is not reliant on student loan payments like they were back in 2020. SoFi Technologies and their phenomenal management has diversified their revenue streams where they are actually planning to have their three main segments and three businesses of their investing segment, their technology segment, and their lending segment to all bring in similar amounts of revenue. Right now, SoFi Technologies is very heavy on student loan financing originations, personal loans, as well as their overall lending segment because that brings in the majority of the revenue. But as they continuously diversify and increase their other two segments, it's going to be absolutely phenomenal to where SoFi is not even reliant on student loan originations, on personal loan originations, or even their lending business. This makes them more resilient, more diversified, and they have a very strong customer base to where even if we go into a full-on recession, their customers are not going to default on any of their loans like we have seen with other banks. So the main message here is that SoFi Technologies is absolutely primed as a business to accelerate the overall company's growth and revenues and profitability in 2023. And all we can do right now is wait. I think in the next month or two, the SoFi stock price will find a bottom and then start to surge again. So that is my opinion. I would love to hear your opinion down below in the comments. Always make sure to do your own research on these companies. Subscribe if you are new. Smash that like button for more SoFi stock videos and I will see you in the next YT video.